Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Market Movers. I'm back. I appreciate my colleague Dan Cook covering while I was out of the office. Uh, but my name is Todd Rich. I'm with Nadex, and I'm back with me, Brian Caprice from Keep Trading Simple. And at Morning Market Movers, we do live analysis for day trading, take a look at hot spots in the markets for today, Monday, April 18th. And it's a bit of a quiet one to start the week. Uh, we do have a couple of hot spots that we want to uh, certainly take a look at. We've got Nat Gas punching higher. I mean, Nat Gas uh, last week kept on climbing and we've gapped a little higher this morning. So we'll take a look at what's going over there in the natural gas markets. We're also seeing some action in the metals. And Brian's got some some uh, ideas on why we're seeing gold and silver also uh, popping higher. And uh, we've got the currency's all pretty flat. Equity markets all a little down, but nothing to uh, to jump up and down about. Uh, but what we are going to talk about is the Dow. Uh, we're going to look at the Dow. And we're going to look at just levels that we might be looking at because this week is a big week for the Dow in terms of earnings. We are in the middle of earnings season, and we've got multiple, several, uh, I think about eight Dow components giving earnings this week. And when you're only talking about 30 different stocks, you know, it, it could, uh, depending upon how these numbers come out, uh, mean some potential activity in the Dow. So with that, before we jump over and I have Brian start looking at some charts and we start to looking at some levels, I do need to share this disclaimer. The training involves risk and may not be appropriate for everyone that any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. And this is an educational session. Please do not construe anything Brian or I say as a buy or sell recommendation. We are doing this for your education purposes. All right. Uh, so, oh, you know what? I was going to uh, bring up the chart of Nat Gas, uh, but you know what? Let's just go ahead and jump into it, Brian. I'm going to flip it over to you for now. And yeah, let's run through some of these commodities and the Dow. Yeah, I mean, it's a typical Monday morning. Uh, it is extremely flat right now. And it does kind of make sense. It is Easter Monday. Uh, it is a UK bank holiday as well. So there really was not a European well, European session. Uh, there was no UK traders in today. Um, it was their holiday. And again, you always expect to see that. Um, as far as headlines in the overnight, um, not too many. I, I mean, there, there was a few, um, you know, uh, Corona was speaking again last night, uh, you know, again, these are. This is not the same article from two weeks ago, but it is the exact same text. I don't know if it, he accidentally sent the same things again or what, but basically, you know, talking about how a weekend benefits Jap Japan's economy as a whole. You know, we're keeping an eye on it. You know, the recent sharp yen depreciation may have an impact on corporate profit forecasts. I mean, basically, basically saying that they're going to maintain the stance that they're in as far as week, 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 week yen. Uh, as far as charts go, I mean, if you if you're getting these in here, describe like the euro yen. It, there's absolutely no movement from it. Nobody cares. At this point, it's already kind of factored in. Um, everybody knows it. Um, and again, if their stance is to continue that in the future, I mean, again, that's kind of what they're saying. So, uh, and again, I guess the big number for them too is 130. Uh, and you can see, you know, we did have a, a bit of a grind up with the dollar last week. But since those comments were made last night, there's really nothing. We're still at that 126 range. You know, 130 is where it becomes the problem all the way up there. And um, again, it, you know, if we get up there because of just dollar going crazy with raises, that may not necessarily be enough to be considered, you know, overly weak. Um, it's going to depend on the other currencies out there. But right now, again, you know, that's one of the bits. Um, last week, obviously, the story was uh, Elon taking over Twitter. Uh, looks like Jack Dorsey um, really kind of jumped in late last night, about nine hours ago. Um, really kind of jumping in and slamming the board. Uh, basically, you know, the co-founder and short-term board member basically said that the the, the um, it's consistently, you know, basically Twitter, it's consistently been the dysfunction of the company talking about um, the board, right? Historically, the board is, you know, all the problems. So it's interesting that the co-founder is saying, yep, this is great. Let, let Elon take it. So um, that will kind of add in as well as we see kind of how that battle unfolds. Um, and again, he tried to play nice. Now, who knows if they're going to take it or not take it. Um, a lot of the news articles were all like, he, he needs to take it. Um, Twitter trying to block it is stupid. Just let them have it. Um, they can't really technically stop him if he wants it. Um, and again, if he has to do a hostile, then it's kind of like, hey, <laughs> all the people that stood up against you, if he has to take it hostily, you're gone. Um, yeah. If you let him take it, you probably still have a job. Uh, so kind of interesting. But again, we'll see as that unfolds later this week. Uh, you know, that'll drive Twitter. Uh, we had some data out of China. I think it's important to mention well. 
that China's uh, GDP numbers came in at only 4.8. And it's interesting you're saying it's not all we considering that, you know, last year they were having all the Olympics booms and everything like that. What, what's going on in China right now is this is the the big kind of headline for them is that, you know, is China is turning to, to focus on their supply chains. We mentioned it last week and the, the second I forget who said it last week, but we had an immediate response in the market. Um, one of the talking heads talked about it. We haven't heard the supply the end of the supply chain that yet China is now trying to kind of tweak the rules a little bit to improve the living and working conditions of the logistics industry, providing employees with financial support and deferring payments alone. So they're trying to help it. They know it's coming, but we haven't necessarily seen the supply chain issue yet. Um, we will see it. It is coming. Um, and there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, but speaking of supply chains as well, there was news out of Australia and that's probably why we're seeing some movement in gold and silver in particular. Um, Basically, Europe is looking for other places to be able to get, uh, you know, imports from. Um, Australia is another country in that uh, area that is pretty rich in resources. Um, China gets a lot of it. Again, Chinese data typically um, uh, uh, kind of spills over as far as uh, the strength of the Australian dollar. Um, you know, in here they talk about how, they knew that, you know, because Europe is now also looking to Australia now to be able to import from there versus, um, you know, for, you know, Russian resources, uh, they're saying that there may be a more hawkish policy. So. We don't have it yet, but this kind of shows us that, hey, listen, we need to pay attention, keep our finger on the pulse. Things like tonight where we at 9.30 p.m., we have the monetary policy meeting notes for Australia. If they start to bring this up, again, that's where we start to see Australian strength flood back into the market. And savvy investors, you know, in gold and, you know, basically the natural resources, gold and silver are going to look at this and be like, oh, Australia is going high. The Aussie dollar is going high. OK, well, they got a lot of gold. Um, that could be a reason why we're driving it there. So. So Again, supply chain going to are they, Australia. Are they but, what the people are gonna look? They're 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 pushing gold and silver higher, waiting to hear the Aussie news. The news comes yeah. out, uh the Aussie dollar potentially pops, and what then they're gonna unload their gold and silver and make it a make it a trade. <laughs> are people yeah, trying probably to get not when the rate pop it's probably more when the US raises their rate, because that's where that's where we're seeing like the United States is carrying right. a brunt of inflation right now. Um, again, supply chain going to raise prices even more. Um, now there's we have a bird flu in the United States now that like 30 percent of the chickens, like 27 million chickens were you know put down um, over the weekend. Uh, because yeah. Of, uh, you know, Bad. bird flu going through. So meat prices are going to go higher again. Uh, and this is one of those things, you know, we mentioned last year that, you know, their whole transitory, you know, uh, talk track was just the absolute most ridiculous thing ever. Um, if we've learned anything they, in the last three years. They couldn't know years. that the bird flu was going to be this bad, but yeah, that's only going to compound the problems. We got to get we got to get yeah. moving on the inflation thing because there's no question we're gonna we're all gonna we're feeling I mean, it. I, I mean, yeah, I mean Bullard, who's speaking later on today at four, he's the only one that's been right whatsoever. Um, Jamie Dimon was right. Everybody's right except the people at the Fed, um, as well as the people in in political power right now. Um, again, you can't you can't wait to be reactionary um it's kind of like the boy scout motto right always be prepared they haven't yep. been prepared from one bit now we're at 40 year highs it's only going to get worse because of a bird flu supply chain shortages and everything else and if you couldn't have saw this coming two years ago i don't know why they have the power that they have so again it's it's kind of it goes back to common sense like you need to be prepared for this could this happen yes has it happened before yes and you did absolutely nothing to prepare for it and basing everything off of earnings and things like that it's like oh no no the, the labor market it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And now we're seeing, you know, unemployment rates lower than we've really ever seen them, uh, or as far as um, ADP numbers go. And yet they're still not doing anything, and we're still debating whether it's going to be a 0.5 or a 0.25 next time. Right. So It'll who be knows? 5. It better be 0. 0.5. I think we'll all flip flip our heads if they it, don't start it, doing it something. Been point two, it should have been 0.5 It should have been 0.5 last, five last time. time. <laughs> yeah. All well, the, the war. The war. Yeah, they, yeah. they caught even, us. Even, even New Zealand is uh, point five, raised 0.5. So, right. Um, and then another thing, again, this isn't directly affecting us right now, but it will have repercussions down the road a little bit as well. Um, Markin's approval rating dropped slightly one week before the election. Um, he is going against a conservative candidate, um, you know, Marie Le Pen. Um, originally, it was supposed to be a slam dunk. And then a week before, it was kind of like, well, maybe it's not as much when they started looking at the data. And again, with his approval rating dropping, this will go from a left candidate to, I would say, almost kind of an extreme right. She's kind of considered more of an extreme conservative. Um, she, that yeah. would definitely have some uh, interesting kind of repercussions as well for France. Um, you know, we'll see. So right now, again, the election is still a week away. It's not here. But as far as charts go today, um, I think big things to point out right now is obviously the VIX is up. 
uh, quite a big gap, but there's not a lot there. Um, Russia is intensifying things. Um, they did lose a ship over the weekend. Um, I guess some of the Ukrainian missiles that we that were given to them or whatever, they did take out one of the what's considered their flagship. The it's flagship actually not one. a very large. Yeah, it's it's not actually a very large vessel. It was just a missile cruiser. We have they're like throwaway for us, um, United States. Why it was important was because that was kind of the the Black Sea flagship, even though it's not of their overall navy. And the problem is Turkey locks down its straight, so they actually can't get any more ships down there. Again, Russia's not going to attack Turkey just because of their you know their political affiliations. Um, but it is kind of a big deal there. But basically, Russia has no problem taking planes, tanks, more soldiers into the Ukraine. So. There is kind of retaliation. Maripol is about to drop. They said any day now it will fall. Um, they will lose a major port city there. Um, yeah. At this point, there's no other sanctions that we can really throw on Russia. Um, but Russia did make one headline today that says, hey, you know what? Uh, where is it? There's still time to make your payments before you default on gas, and then Russia is going to turn the gas off. So <laughs> that's another reason why we're seeing things move. It's, it's, it was just over here. I missed it a little while ago. Yeah. I had it. Um, um, oh, here you go right here. There's still time because we said you deliver and then you have a month to a month and a half to make those payments. Um, yeah. They weren't supposed to make payments till the middle of April to the end of May or to the beginning of May. That's when the actual payments were due. They had the bill in the mail. And I said, there's still time to switch. Um, but at this point, I think it's pretty much guaranteed Russia's going to be like, you didn't pay. They're turning. So they're turning that could, that off. could, I mean, that certainly could be contributing why we're seeing Nat gas doing what it's doing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's kind of like a poke the bear situation, you know, Everything that Russia has done with his invasion has not it, it, it's just horrible to speak about. But when you suddenly go on the offensive and start attacking Russia, they're gonna use more of the weapons at their disposal. Um, you know, taking out uh, a flagship, you I mean Russia it, the Ukraine has already been said that yes, we know retaliation is coming. We know it's there. Right. Well and, they're and gonna they're gonna know, defend themselves and of course Russia's gonna then escalate. I mean, I, I didn't think I don't I, I don't see the Ukrainians just dis- rolling over and saying, no, please come take our country. Um, I don't think yeah, no, anyone and anticipated I don't, that. No, no, but, I, you know, I think going on the offensive is a completely different scenario, and I think that's where it's kind of like, you know, I, yes, it is a missile cruiser, but Russia can't refuel that missile cruiser. It was pretty much empty at this point, but now they have a, a battle flag to rally behind that you sank our ships. So yes, we're coming. It, it's one of those things. I mean, it's, 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 it's yeah. a chess game, so... But natural gas, we talked last week, there's no reason ever, like, at this point, there's no reason to get short this, and we and we watched it. I mean, last week, we went higher, and higher, and higher, and I was like, every time there's a pullback, get in, get in, get in, and we gapped up, and literally it has continued to push higher. And even at this point, I mean, we were hoping to get some pressure. What was the news this weekend? There's a nor'easter that we're going to get unseasonably cold and hail opportunities for this week on the East Coast. Yeah, that's not, that's not helping either, because um, then again, we're getting our seasonal seasonal weird fluctuations of natural gas. So I think it's the same thing with natural gas. Any type there's a any time there's a pullback. I mean, we were laughing last year. I remember the joke was Brian's going to buy gas at six fifty. Yeah, now we're, we're at, at six, seven six. We're, seven. we're at seven sixty now. So Why? you know it's gotten much much higher. And remember, natural gas is actually kind of the the the, the energy commodity we want people to use. Now people are saying, I don't want to use natural gas. Give me the other stuff out there. We need other things. Um, and again, there's a ripple effect in everything that happens. So Russia turns gas off. This is going to get even worse. Um, it's crazy. But again, this is yeah. the biggest mover of the weekend right now. Um, as we mentioned, gold and silver, both rallying as well. And again, going into the Monday um, with inflation, talking about supply chains, China locking down logistics, it will all raise inflation. Again, the only thing that's going to cap this is going to be talks of raising interest rates. Maybe we get a little bit from Blurred later today, but um, I don't really even have any major sell areas up until you know 2013. Um, obviously, there's a lot of chop back and forth in here, and this is the area that we're in. So the 2000 mark is obviously going to be, be a big one, large psychological uh, number that the, the media will just go crazy with. Silver, obviously, going to, you know moving twice as fast as gold. Um, silver, though, is actually bouncing off of an area that we talked about, this 2605 to 2616. We are rolling into a new session, even though the UK session was open. There was a big spike right before. I wouldn't actually be surprised if this, the profit taking comes in. We start to push down a little bit in silver. Silver also has an industrial use that does tend to be tied with um, uh, China. But again, it goes back to the EU looking to Australia to be able to take some of those metals out there because China's weaker. That may actually help stabilize it just a little bit. Um, and then, like I said, currency is completely flat. Um, cryptos. 
they're all down a little bit right now. Uh, again, it's kind of like um, this is going back to, a, I'd say, more or less a flight to safety. Dollars up, again, stabilizing itself above 100. As far as the indices goes, again, the VIX is high, although it should come dropping down a little bit. But they're all kind of an interesting spot where if you take the overnight highs, the lows, they're all at a 23.6 level. Um, we talked about 43.85 being a level last week. Again, we're not trading these over the weekend. It did bounce right off that level and then drop. So, you know, if we make kind of adjustments and, hey, where could the next trade be? You can see it's a little bit higher up, but we just bounced off that 23.6. So currencies traded or um, futures traders in the overnight will be looking to continue this trend to the downside. Uh, NQ, kind of the same thing. Um, again, we just bounced off the 23.6. It's interesting. We had a level over here that we had talked about. It was a level that was hit a few different times and we were looking for a break. It actually based in there and, and could have given you a short entry. That's kind of sitting up there right above the 23.6 as well. So another area where if we get a little bit of a pop, even though with the VIX coming down, it is kind of more in a, in, in, you know, a, as far as technical trading goes, a more of a short basis. YM, exact same thing. It's actually hit that area above the 23.6 and has already started to pull back again. So again, in a downtrend coming back down to 34,000, we got 291 points to go. It's kind of already initiated itself. And this one, uh, again, this was a pretty easy one. A basing level right above. We knew there was a pullback in there over the weekend. Roll in and no European exposure. There's your one to three. It doesn't even take it all the way back down to a full retracement of 34, um, 190. So YM's there. And then again, uh, also, yeah, on the, the YM. Biggest. Yeah, I just want to I just want to emphasize on the YM. Remember, it's go, uh, for the Dow. We are going to be seeing major earnings this week. Um, you know, in fact, I just wanted to put this out because I'm just taking a look. I just took a step back and went a little uh, to one hour, a one hour chart and went back to recent fibs on the one hour. And I would expect to see it really make a break out of one of these ranges if some of these numbers come um, come in out of whack. But on, on the one hour, the 23.6 has, you know, was support. Now it's resistance if we get up there. And it's been kind of holding the 38.2 level. Um, uh, as support i mean it's been range bound for the last you know what is that for the last uh i'm gonna call it the last couple of weeks um so yeah depending upon how these numbers come out later this uh here let me just duplicate this there we go and here's the other down below uh i mean you can see it has certainly stayed pretty much within a range for the last couple of weeks here uh, and depending upon how numbers come out, if we see some outliers, uh, we could we could potentially see some breakouts in the Dow, one way or the other. Um, although, uh, with the way the earnings season has been going, uh, watch that downside. Uh, companies have been missing. So, uh, just something to point out. All right, sorry about that. And then you were going to do the Russell real quickly. <laughs> just the off. Russell's in the same scenario. It's it's in an area where we had buyers. It was confirmed before. It literally spent the weekend basing through, chopping those guys up. Kind of bounced off of it twice. A little bit of a long entry, kind of a, a pullback in the early morning hours. But we're also up at the twenty three six. So all four indices kind of at the same area. Yeah, they found some buyers down below, but we've hit those buyers multiple times at this point. Um, and in regards to earnings, um, I don't think you know if earnings are a miss, meaning hey, listen, we're not as good as we were. Again, that's every reason to go down. They can affirm their earnings and say, yep, our earnings look great, but we're expecting supply chain disruptions because China is locking things down. They're putting people yeah. in these camps right now. Um, again, that's it, it's remember, earnings are great if nothing has changed, but has anything changed in the last two months? And yes, China kind of shutting down and closing down and kind of things expanding. Inflationary pressures are a big deal going forward. Um, remember, a rising interest rate environment all, is also considered a negative. So we know we have a rising interest rate environment. We know that we have supply dis chain disruptions on the way. They can still use Ukraine. There's more things out there to be negative with earnings than there are positive. So I yep. think, you know, it's easy to watch any of these zones that have been areas of buyers. They've all been hit multiple times. Even this 34,000, you can see there's three hits right here. Um, they're all kind of set up in the same way. Look for negativity out there. And um, again, we're just kind of in that environment right now with, uh, you know, like I said, with the VIX is where it is. And yeah. Lots of uncertainty. I mean, that's just what it is. And when there's uncertainty, fear fear creeps in. So uh, just got to be aware of that. Uh, it creates trading opportunity. And don't forget it's tax day. It is oh, tax day. there we go. Um, oh, man. Now yeah, you really there's, ruined there's, my, my comeback yeah. day. I'm my first day back there's, and you punch me in the face. <laughs> yeah. Maine and like Minnesota, there's two states that it's actually tomorrow, but everybody else it's today. So Yeah. Oh, great. Just, uh, just what we'd have to look forward to. All right, with that, any questions for Nadex, please email us, customerservice at nadex.com. Brian and I are both also accessible. If you'd like that, if you have any questions for Brian, please feel free. 
email Brian at support at keeptradingsimple.com. I'm available as well, Todd.rich at nadex.com. If you got questions, concerns, or you'd like to see us providing more or less, uh, hopefully you're getting benefits out of these, these morning sessions. If you like what we're doing, please, by all means, give us a like there on Facebook or on, on, on YouTube. Brian and I do appreciate that. It is a bit of a slow start to the week. Uh, equities looking a little soft. Expecting to see some potential volatility in the Dow this week. Uh, Nat gas punching higher along with the metals. Uh, you know, uh, so we are seeing some activity in some of those commodities markets. Brian and I will be back tomorrow morning. Remember, tomorrow afternoon, midday, uh, Brian will be doing a full-blown session on all of the markets, uh, much more in-depth and uh, also what to look forward to later this week. Uh, but for today, other than Bullard speaking this afternoon, uh, not much on the, uh, on the economic report or event front. With that, thank you so much for joining us, Brian, and I will be back tomorrow morning. And until then, good luck in the markets, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us.